Hey everyone, I just can't seem to get away from the junk mail, can I? I? I look at this. So I made these years ago and I tried to use distress sprays on them. And as you can see, it works okay, but it took weeks for this to dry where it wouldn't come off on my hands. Because these junk mail flyers are shiny. And I didn't realize at the time I was just starting to get into the mixed media and didn't realize that a lot of the sprays, inks, what have you, are not going to work well. Sorry for moving the camera. Are not going to work well on this slick stuff. I, I needed to put some gesso or something on first. But even at that, I don't know if it wouldn't just flake off. So, now that they're dry, I'm going to make things out of them. I was inspired by, again, Bonnie and Clive. Love Bonnie. She was making some envelopes. And she made them, she had taken a phone book and decoupaged every page just with scraps. And she was taking those pages and making envelopes out of them. Well, whatever clicked in my mind that, oh my gosh, I get so much of this, of these junk mail flyers, like like this just and and they're a good weight i mean they're really really a nice weight i get small ones like this i get really big ones like this i just think oh wow okay and you know <laughs> for whatever reason i, I don't throw them away because land sakes one day i might use them well today is the day i actually used some of them i was so tickled uh, what i thought of was okay so i did make envelope an envelope out of one and I wanted to show you how I did this not because you don't know how to make an envelope but I'm you know you've seen my desk I, I have stuff here from December dailies I mean I'm still making those and here they lay and by the way I will have a couple of more of those in my shop hopefully today see I'm getting all sidetracked here so I made this envelope from one of those but one of as I was saying one of the things that does bother me if I have a directional paper I don't like for it to be every which way I like to you know as I'm looking at the flap it's right as I'm looking at the front it's right and the back it's right even though when I do a lot of mixed media words are every which way but when it's something like this that is a certain way it bugs me if it's not the right way. So I'll show you how I put this together so that it's like that. And I love this. I didn't cover this side, as you can tell. But I did cover where you open it a little bit. I probably should have done both sides, but I didn't. But I think this is going to be a great envelope for Happy Mail or just anything. I love it. I love how it turned out. It's made from an old dictionary page. And then these three pieces... This was a bigger one, like this. And then this piece and this piece were more like one of these. And I guess probably this, this one was a bigger one like this too. But I got all three of these yesterday, just yesterday in the mail. So I made the envelope and I made a flip pocket like this is going to go on the edge of a page. Grab a journal here. This probably isn't the best one. This is my art journal. So this page, what I would do is I would put this little hinge at the bottom of it. And I would probably on this side, and again, this isn't a full size page, so it's not going to work out the best, but I would probably glue just these two sides and then I would have a little pocket right there and then on this side I would have a flip up I intended to make this side writing where you could flip it down and write but I got carried away with my stamping and all the things and forgot and this is what I ended up with but you could still write on this but that's what it is it's a flip pocket so I made that out of a piece and then out of the smaller one I made this and this is some of the magazine that 
I did on the last video and then I just backed it with packing paper and it will be a huge writing spot for this pocket and I thought that turned out so good this little tag was funny because it was actually for one of my December dailies and I put the wrong dates on it so it's made out of packaging like uh, a Funyun box probably and I just so I just clipped it on this one but now what I was going to tell you is um, as I was creating you know I was I sat down I was so excited and I started making making and I just was grabbing stuff off my desk well at some point I had run out of things to grab but there's so much on my desk seriously and I made it kind of a, a game then I can't get up I have to make these three things from whatever I see on my desk so that was the reason for the packing paper because I intended to use scrapbook paper or something like that so I took packing paper of course stamped all over it love my stamping and used some of the stuff I had done last night because it wasn't off my desk and more of the packing paper so sometimes it's fun when you're creating to make a little game for yourself same with this dictionary page it was just laying on my desk I didn't get up to make any of this other than to sew and in fairness I will say there's a small cart by my desk that has all my inks in it so I, I did and my stamps so I did kind of go off my desk but as I was saying sometimes it's fun when you're creating to challenge yourself can I make these things with just what's right here? And so I thought these turned out great. I don't think they really need a tutorial, but I was going to show you how I, you know, sewed them together and cut the pieces to make them as they are. Again, I don't know that you really need me to do that, but I thought we could do that. So on the envelope, well, here, I'll use this big one. On the envelope, what I did was I formed my envelope how I wanted it. And I did this on everything that I made. I formed what I was gonna do with it, then I covered it. So here, just that simple is my envelope. And if this isn't even, I will straighten it out. And I can find all kinds of things on my desk right now, but not my foam folder, not things I need, just random things so then I took this where these folds are making sure they were really creased so that I could see them and I folded it I laid it on its back side and then I took my dictionary page and laid it like you know I knew this was going to go at the top because this writing is actually the wrong way. So, but it's going to need to go like that. But that's okay. We can still tear it this way. So I laid it on here just like this. I took my ruler. And where that crease is. And I guess I lied. I must have done it from the inside. I did. Okay. So where the crease is. I laid my ruler there, folded up my paper, making sure I had a big enough piece, and then just four. So I knew that would be my top piece. And then for my middle piece, I did the same. I laid my paper in here, folded it up, laid my little ruler there, and then just four. And then that way I can arra arrange the pieces like I want on the outside to make them look, you know, show the correct way. So I'm going to glue the bottom one first. And I just, again, I use the glue stick because I feel like that works best. It doesn't let my paper wrinkle up. My paper won't wrinkle because it's not. Look, I've run out of glue stick. 
it won't wrinkle my paper because it's not water-based. I don't think it's water-based. If it is water-based, it doesn't have as much in it. So then I took my piece, faced it the way I wanted it, and just laid it down. I may not have enough glue on here, but that's okay. And I don't care if it reaches all the way to the bottom or all the way to the top, because we can always, always fix that. And look at that. This this is the kind of stuff that I do I all day. I, I made these three things this morning. Never tore anything. Didn't do anything like that until I turned the camera on. And then that happens. So now I'm going to turn this. I know I want it to face this way. So I take my middle piece, glue it on, you know, and then if I flap, I fold it down like it's going to be facing me. And put the last piece on just like that and I'm not going to continue because for one I'm out of glue stick and for another you know how to, to glue things I was just showing you how I I did that and then I sewed around it and the places that didn't have enough paper to cover that's where I looked around my desk and I found the washi tape so I put washi tape in those seams just to cover and it turned out, I think, I think it turned out perfect. I loved it. And you, there's so many options. You don't have to use washi tape. Use brown packaging and cover it, you know, like it's a little seam. Ribbon, lace. There's so many ways that you can, you know, fill in that little extra space. And then for the pocket, what I did was I folded this. And I knew that in an, a normal 8.5 by 11 journal, if that's the size papers I used, that the width of it's going to be 5.5, roughly. So I cut this down to 5. And these will make great tabs if I choose to keep those, which <laughs> you know I will. And then the length of it was is nine and I know that the length of my paper is only going to be eight and a half so because I'm going to make part of it the flip I don't really need to cut anything off but you can I mean do whatever you want but this is just how I did mine so then I opened it up and I've got my seam here so I just went up that seam a ways however however far you want and I you know you can go pretty far because you think of it this flap is going to be, can be, a little pocket on the other side. So however deep you want that pocket. And then I just cut it across. So there is my pocket. Here is my flap. That will hinge onto the page. Like so. And you don't have to worry about this part because it's going to be glued down. I've already painted this. Probably won't do anything else with it. And I will sew around it. I cut out a finger notch. I inked. You know, I'm always inking. And I love this stays on because it stays on the shiny stuff. It stays on anything. And I don't know if you saw this in a book. You know, I can do some stamping on here, too. That might be a good idea. Because some of the advertisements still showing through. I always intend to make these videos really short for you. And then I get busy decorating and things fall, fall to staves. Alright, so I've inked around it. I'm going to do some stamping on it. And, you know, I have a lot of stamps. I really do. But there's a couple that I like. And I think I keep using them for a couple reasons. To show that even if you only have a few stamps, I mean, you don't need very many to, to change the look of things. All that is is a little bit of script there. And then I like to use, I have a lot, oh, I'm going to go ahead and ink on this bottom piece too. 
and again I can turn it because I know that the wording is going to be up this way on the, the other page not that it matters this is script and you really can't tell what it says anyway but if you can now you can see what it says of course I need to ink the back too because that's going to flip down or I say ink the back stamp the back I actually do need to ink it too though don't I because that is going to show and I'll do all that before I sew it up or glue it up whatever you do how are you going to do it? Add a little bit more color here and there. I think I'll do some more paint splatters on this one. Have this different kind of paint splatter too, just to give it a little bit of variety. And I have one of these that kind of looks like a coffee ring, but I'm going to use it as just like maybe they've set their paint, paint can down. A little overzealous right there, but that's okay. And now I'm just going to sew around it and this is done. How easy was that? And we made it from just a flyer. And again, I had already painted this one, but I mean, you could cover it with, with anything, just like I did the envelope. And now to make the inside piece, and this is the piece I cut off, what I'll probably do is back this. I was talking about using or dyeing papers that were printed on one side, maybe as an accident. Well, this is one of those. I would probably just, I'm just going to back this with that kind of paper. See, and then you don't know all this steps over here. And I'll make a tag out of this. So that won't go to waste either. But I just took my smaller one and just measured, you know, once I sew around it. This one I said was five. So I'll cut this one at four because I want to make sure it has a lot of room to go in and out. The last one I made, I got pretty stingy with my paper and I think I've made it a little bit tight so I'm just going to cut this one down to four again great tabs I won't throw it away the height of it is roughly six and three quarters and I don't mind if it sticks out a little bit from the top I might just go ahead and cut it six Six and three quarters, six and a half, something like that. Just guessing again, as always. And I'll keep that. And you could smush on this. You can um, cover it, which is what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to cover a piece of it with this. Well, I don't have any glue. Let me grab some glue. Okay, we're back in business. We have glue. Lay my tea dyed paper on there. Also, the good thing about the glue stick is you can move it around for a little bit. And just cut around it. I was trying to see if any of the pictures we did in the last video would work on this. I think they're not wide enough. This one looks like a toilet stool. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to use that one or not. I can't get it out of my head. It looks like a something being in a bathroom. Okay. But anyway, you get the gist. Cover it with something on this side. And then you have this wonderful writing spot on the back side. And you can just put it in your pocket. Perfect. I mean, that easy. We made a writing spot a flip pocket, and part of an envelope from just junk mail flyers. I just think this is, I really like this. I hope you do.
got my glue stick now, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this envelope. I think I'll do it this way because I like those letters on the dictionary being on that side. I really like the blue stick better too because I can see where I've got the glue and where I've missed a spot. And as you can see, I got sloppy and part of my ran over. So I will trim that off. But even if I didn't, I'm probably going to run some washi tape right down through there. And it's going to cover it up. Washi tape isn't meant to stay forever, so I like to... Put some glue down. And then I'll probably put some washi here at the bottom. Well, I'll just do it. Don't just tell me about it. Do it. And see how this dark is showing? I'm not going to worry about that because when I ink around, that dark really just kind of fills in. It doesn't look bad. I don't really worry about the edges so much because it just kind of blends in with everything else. And again, this is, you know, look at that rough edge. I love that. I'll probably keep that. Just junk mail. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Could always do some stamping on this too. You know, some of the paint splatters or whatever. I found this one. Let's use it. And I think I'm going to do it where it hits the top and the bottom of the flap. Something like that. I like that. That looks cool. I think I'll go ahead and do a few paint splatters too. Just for good measure. I don't know that the paint splatters really go with the post office stuff, but, you know, maybe they were renovating. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm just making up crap now. Okay. Now I'm getting carried away. I never know when to stop with my stamping. Should have stopped like 10 minutes ago, probably. There we have it. And I love this. I do. I think it's cool. Put an eyelet there, wrap around with some twine or ribbon or sari silk. You could put a Velcro snap. You could leave it <laughs> like I'm probably going to do. But I think, wouldn't this look cool with like one of the little Tim Holtz people? And then maybe a rusted bottle cap. I mean, gosh, my mind doesn't stop, does it? Okay. Maybe he's sitting on this washi tape. <laughs> okay. Sorry, guys. I got carried away there. I hope this inspired you and gave you some ideas of what to do with your junk mail. Other than throwing it in the trash. Thanks for watching, guys. And I will see you next time. Bye.